Hi, and welcome back to the continuing adventures of Rurik. When we last left off, Rurik had fought off hostile forces along the Silk Road, but his reputation was not high enough for him to garner any gold from the, uh, from the battles. Um, your Edda is your reputation level. And everybody starts off with zero. And that determines various things like can you acquire one of the better ships? Can you get uh, the Varangian Guard um, to like on the Silk Road? You have to have a high you have to have a high enough veta that you can roll under or equal to to plunder it. And not having a high enough Edda. Rurik was left uh, standing there scratching his head. However, he and his band of valiant Vikings will head south now, portaging their ships to Frank Reich. There they will attempt to perform another quest and hopefully capture the area um, trading center where they may get one gold per voyage if they're lo located there, but since that only occurs at oh, the first part of the turn, that means they'd have to stay there all turn using up one whole voyage, so we'll see what happens. First thing Rurik is going to do is he's going to recruit another Huskarl. Right now he has one Huskarl and two longships. So you can recruit in any Viking homeland, that's the, the yellow rectangles, or um, where else? Uh, either through special cards or rules, but in this case, because he's a Jarl, you can uh, recruit anything in a space with a Jarl except the land space you can't build a long ship of course so another Huskarl will join his force and I'm just gonna keep them over to the side over here on the uh, leader leader spaces um, just to reduce stacking and all that type of thing speaking of stacking stacking is four hostiles Hostile units and unlimited for Vikings. Uh, well, no, wait a minute. You may have four Viking units plus a number equal to your current Edda level. Stacking does not apply to settlement, pillage, or quest markers, or to hostile units. Okay. However, you can never have more than one quest marker in a space. Also, you may only have one settlement or pillage marker in a space. Never both. So, four. And since you can put um, two units on a, and you can also put two units on a uh, long ship. So if that helps explain anything. So we're just going to take this force along, the long ships and the uh, Huskarls. We're going to portage the ships down here to Frank, Frank Crike. Frank Reich. Anyway, let's see what that's all about. So, first thing we did was we we raised troops, we moved, we didn't move by water or anything, so there's no storms or anything like that. Uh, then we'll draw a vo voyage card and see what we have. See what fate bestalls us. Or, be, yeah, whatever it is. Okay. We have Niflheim. Niflheim. Let's see if we can get a good look at this here. Make an edit check. Ew, this is going to be bad. If we succeed, we gain one voyage card or reveal one quest marker. Well, if we fail, we lose one voyage card. Well, since we start with zero, um, we're going to automatically assume a fail and we'll lose another quest card. Or, uh, voyage card. So I'm not even going to look at the voyage card. I don't want to. I don't want to know what I just lost. So these two will go to the discard pile. And that used up uh, 
basically two of my voyage cards, or basically two turns. Uh, sorry, we're a little blurred there. And the, um, what was that, Niflheim? Uh, just a moment here. Uh, so anyway, not important. Basically, um, his reputation was not high enough for him to succeed, or to even have a chance to succeed at that particular um, voyage card. So, we will now encounter the quest, which is, ta-da, ruins. That's not a bad one. Um, ruins will let you pick, I mean, we still have to have a battle here at the ruins. We'll get to select any one of the quest markers not revealed, reveal it, and receive the bonus described, and place the Ruins quest marker above the edit track. If all quest markers have been revealed, gain one voyage or two gold. The revealed quest is considered accomplished and placed above the map near the compass rose. So, <clears throat> that's what Ruins will do. If we are successful here, and win the battle that we have to fight, you always have to fight a battle at a quest marker. Then, <coughs> excuse me, like it says, we'll get to look at another quest marker on the map somewhere. Right at the moment, we don't really have the resources to consider any of the other quest markers except the one in the northeast uh, corner of the screen because the other ones are down here in Morocco. Uh, Cirqueland and over here in Sirland, Sirland. And I have no idea if these are real names of the time or if they're just meant to, you know, made up names of places that we know of currently or not. Uh, don't know, don't think I'm going to take the time to really try to find out, but you know, they give you a good enough idea of where things are without being too much of a fantasy kind of a setting, I suppose. Anyway, so now we have to fight hostiles that are here near these ruins, and I, by ruins I know they mean the small little stones and stuff like that, but <clears throat> um, I'm just going to use the term interchangeably. And in Frank Reich we discover one. Well, we'll take the one. We discover one hostile force, and it happens to be a lonely um, single unit with a combat strength of one, basically. So, Rorik might catch a break here. We will see, though. Alright, I'm going to set up the battle here, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I had the battle set up. We had the one lone hostile force versus two Huskarls, two Longships, and then Rurik himself. Um, we're going to roll for tactical advantage. Excuse my hand. We have at least a plus from Rurik, so we will get a plus one to our die roll. Um, we will be wide as usual. Well, we tie. Tie goes to the Vikings. So, roll the one and a two. Like I said, white is the Vikings, and <clears throat> it's a tie. So, like I said, we tie goes to the Vikings. The one hostile force will attack the first. Well, actually, we get the initiative. Sorry about that. The Huskarls here will attack the first hostile force. Rolling a five, which is a miss. And the, hus uh, the hostile force will fire back at the top unit uh, with a one or less, and actually hits. Now well, that's pretty rough. So, okay, we'll move the stack up right up here, and we'll do this again. Uh, round two. Uh, let me think a second here. No, it's still round one. 
because the rest of my forces get to attack before he does again. So, actually, it's still round one. Um, the Huskarl versus the hostile force, three or less. We get a hit and it dies. So, we are victorious at this battle. And all we gain is the ability to claim that we were victorious. The Battle of uh, Frank Reich. Or Frank Reich. Well, I'm going to have trouble with that the rest of the game, I can tell. So, with that done, we are now occupying a trade center. Thank goodness for these low counter density games. Okay, I just want to check a couple things there, and it looks like everything uh, is going okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we took one Huskarl as a casualty, and one of the opposing hostile forces was eliminated, and there is no nothing to gain or lose by... Well, there's... Always something to lose. There's just nothing to gain if the, uh, on a quest marker if you succeed in um, destroying the hostile forces that occupy that quest marker. And that's just done as you know. You go on to the you go by using your voyage card. You move on to the quest. If you have to fight something, you fight something. Then you win or lose something. But regardless, after that, you have to fight a battle against just generic hostile forces that are at the actual quest site itself so anyway the ruins remain where they're at at the moment face up <clears throat> let's see I don't know if I go ahead and select the quest markers not revealed yet or not doesn't sound like uh, doesn't sound like it matters so to accomplish the quest I have to pick uh, another quest marker that hasn't been revealed so we'll go ahead and reveal this quest marker which is uh, great another name to try to pronounce ah uh, the Ginunga Ginunga Gap Ginunga Gap. Gain one Jarl at no cost in this space, and the quest marker is available for placement in the next saga. Um, that's if you're playing the um, campaign. Or gain one Edda and remove this quest for the rest of the campaign. So, I could gain another Jarl, or I could gain one Edda point. Uh... I think another Jarl might be uh, an important factor right now, so I think I'm going to pick one at random, and we'll see what we get. The Edda would be nice, but it's like only a one, so I'm going to be rolling, you know, versus a one or less. Uh, I think the uh, I think the extra Jarl will be more important, especially since I keep losing Huskarls um, every time somebody pulls out a sword. So we are going to try to position the camera over here to our other three stalwart Jarls and I'm just going to do the top one Eric are one to two, Leaf will be three to four and Harold will be five or six. Four, so it's going to be what? Leaf? Yes, Leaf will come with us. His bonus is he increases movement of voyaging force by one space. Well, that would be kind of handy. So I'm going to stop here for a moment and tidy things up a bit, and we will continue on with the uh, third voyage of Rurik. Okay, I got really overexcited and got ahead of myself. I don't actually get the new Jarl because I have not actually in, 
performed a quest uh, in this space. I just revealed the quest, but I have not actually entered the space and dealt with the quest. So Leaf is going to have to go back. Um, he got all excited about getting to go on the quest and found out that he had to stay at home. So if I were to go to here, I'll have to still encounter the quest. And, you know, if I beat the hostile forces that are there, um, then I would get to do the gin gap bap ginunga gap. Um, so anyway, we are now going to start this third voyage. I call them voyages because that's basically what they are. You know, the voyaging force. Each draw of a card or play of a uh, of a voyage card, you know, is basically one turn. So. We have the trade segment. Um, we uh, receive one gold at the Voyaging Force is in a trade center space with the settlement. Well, problem is, no, it's not there with the settlement, unfortunately. But it does have uh, a trade center. So, I guess I could have built, I had one gold and Rurik can build a settlement for one gold. I guess I'm going to have to cheat and put a settlement down because um, that's the last thing that you would do is pillage or build a settlement right after the quest uh, segment so we have the pillage settlement segment so yes cheating we're going to put a settlement down and that'll spend the last piece of gold that he had um, as they investigate the spot of the ruins and wander around they come across uh, a hill and looking over the hill they find a small place that would be just perfect for settling um, Rurik doesn't tell the others at this time but later he will put a settlement there anyway we are now back to this third voyage starting again and we have the trade segment we have the voyaging force which is going to be all of these guys and they will get one gold for being at a tra settlement with the trade center all right, <clears throat> we'll just keep moving on. Pretend like that never happened. All right, so we then have the recruitment. I can recruit uh, units, but nothing costs just one. So I'm going to save it for building another <clears throat> settlement when I need to. Okay, then we have the movement segment. If I kept leaf or if I had had leave, he would give us one extra space of uh, movement, but I don't. Um, so we're basically stuck with the same guys we have. Uh, the movement segment. Well, we are going to cart, or with the portage, I guess is the correct term, our long ships. Now I'll put one air work on one and the huskarl on the other. So we're going to portage across this uh, land connection here back up to Vinland and we can only move one space at a time we're within stacking limits of four units leaders do count as a unit by themselves uh, for all purposes and I'm afraid that's as far as we can get at this time uh, get at this this turn I've accomplished only one of my objectives I have one settlement built I suppose I could build another settlement in Vindland. Well, no, because I need to build them on a trade center, a warrior kingdom, or a fortress. And I've only built one so far on a trade center. My other objectives were to build one here at Home Guard, and uh, that would take care of the fortress or the. Um, warrior uh, kingdom I guess I should try to clarify for myself even if I captured this space which is a fortress and a warrior kingdom I can only pick one of the two basically if I build a settlement on it which is part of my objectives so you know I could choose a fortress and then I still have to go fight a warrior kingdom again and, and control it and build another settlement there to meet my objectives just like down at the trade center 
I had to build a settlement on a trade center, so I chose that one. Um, and that would leave me still having to pick two more, which is a fortress and a uh, warrior uh, kingdom. So even if I did take home guard, there would be a very, which is a very slim chance in and of itself at the moment, I would still have to go down to like say Kiev. Uh, I, I conquer the warrior kingdom and go down to Kiev and conquer the fortress and settle both of those places. Then I would meet my objectives, but um, still trying to get a grasp on this game and it seems pretty tough. Um, historically, Eric would have went up to L Ladoga and made his little kingdom up there. Rurik. Not Eric. Rurik. I can't remember what I said. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to be able to play this historically because I feel like going over to Wessex and Ireland. Well, I've already got a trade center. I guess it would be Wessex or Paris. Wessex or Paris. And I could capture a fort and the uh, warrior kingdom at Wessex. So I'm not quite sure what I do want to do. Let me deliberate for a moment. I'll be back. Okay. Upon further review, the play is going to be, I think, I move my forces back to Frank Reich. Yes, I'll never stop saying that for the rest of this game, uh, rest of these videos, I'm afraid. I'm going to have to try to pronounce that word. Okay, what we're going to do is, I think, we're going to take our ships by river, that's what the blue line is, to Frisia. Then we're going to enter the uh, English Channel uh, sea zone, whatever you want to call it, sea space. And I think we will attack Wessex and then, what's the best way to get to Paris from here though? I guess we'll have to come back through Normandy and take the river and try to capture Paris. Um, problem is I only have six voyages left. So it's gonna cost me what? I think I have to stop here then I have to come here and then I have to stop up with the ships. Then I can attack Wessex in the next turn. Here, here, here. I don't think I'm going to have enough turns unless I can gain some voyage cards. So I really am in a tough spot. I have met my requirements for the two quests, but getting in one settlement, but to get to the other two settlements is going to be quite a challenge and I'm not quite sure that it's going to be doable without some decent voyage cards and some lucky die rolls during combats but we'll give it a shot see what we can do so after thinking long and hard about it Rorik says nah I think we'll go to Frisia instead of inland so we wander down the river here floating our longboats to Frisia and we can only move, do we have to stop or can we move on? I think we can only move one, well it's not technically. Let me double check on spaces here, land and river and all that stuff real quick. Two types of movement, land and naval. During a voyaging forces movement, you may move the force any number of spaces up to its movement allowance. One if by land and one to three if by naval. So we're gonna go one, you can split your forces, leaving some behind, but you can't pick others up. Naval movement is you roll a die, divide by two, and round up. Transports. Ship must start, start in the same place. Space is land units. Ships pick up the units and move them. Land units must stay with the transporting ship for the entire move. You may debark a transported land unit at the end of any movement if not in a sea space. Not in a sea space. If there's not sufficient ships to transport the entire force, then you can only use those that are eligible to move. Blah, blah, blah. Well, if I read that right, since we're basically using 
Hmm. Are we using naval movement to move across a river? A river route. And I don't know. Let me read that one more time. Okay, so basically what I can understand is after leaving Frank Reich, we basically picked up our units there and we're making our naval moves out across uh, um, areas that are accessible to naval units. So I need to roll a die and find out how many moves I actually get with the naval force. And I roll a two, which is a one. So I guess we will stop at Frisia. Uh, this is going to be painful and slow, and that's not good. Okay, then. We're going to pretty much stay as the same force, not splitting off or doing anything like that. So we will now move to the voyage card segment. Well, we'll see what fate has in storage, <laughs> has in storage for us. Alliance, keep. I can keep this card. What do we do? One, play at the start of a lead, da, leading segment, which is basically recruiting. If the force is in a warrior or fortress space, to gain one die roll of gold, or two, play after picking a voyage card to cancel the card event. Disco, discard both cards when used. So I can uh, play after picking a voyage card to cancel the card event. Hmm. Well, I can't use it right at the moment until like basically the next voyage card to be drawn. So I will keep it, as it says, because I don't think I'll be in a warrior or fortress space uh, the next turn. Although. Theoretically, I could be in uh, Wessex, so we'll keep it and see if that's what I want to do or not. Alright, so voyage card segment's over with little or no bloodshed. We do the quest uh, segment. There is no quest. And there is no settlement to pillage or that I want to build. So that ends that voyage, which I think is what, the third? Second or third voyage, third voyage I think. I'm losing track of the number of voyages of Rurik. <clears throat> so, with that I'm going to end it here and we will pick up again um, at the next voyage. So, until then...